Hello and welcome to the Off Grid Mountain Homestead. I'm going to give you an update on the RV build. I've been running the components for about 45 days, maybe a little bit longer now since I've completed the install. Um, no complaints whatsoever. I'm going to show you it kind of looks factory, best I, best I can manage. Uh, batteries are under this bench right here. The inverter, all the wiring, things like that are back here. I'll show you everything in just a minute. Got the charge controller up on the wall, the Outback uh, FM80, Flex Max 80 charge controller. I'm going to have some footage of the solar panels, performance, things like that. Got the inverter remote right here. Um, I added a shunt that wasn't included with the original kit. So I just I found a budget shunt and uh, put that in there for, for monitoring the battery. So I want to show you where everything's at and uh, talk about pros and cons of what's been going on with it. And a little performance, do a little testing on the inverter. I'm going to run the microwave as a load on the inverter today because it is... 30 degrees outside and it's 50, 52 in here. Uh, so not gonna do much, uh, prove much running the AC with no load on it. And I got low ambient, nothing like that on it. So, uh, you know, everything's been doing what it's supposed to do uh, and performing considering winter sun and low angle and being in the middle of the woods. I'm happy with uh, all the components so far. So we'll look at the batteries first and then uh, go to the other components and just make a loop and then do a little bit of testing. So I'm gonna start with the rich solar batteries. I got them under this bench right here. So just utilizing some of the some of the space to stack my batteries so I can keep them climate controlled. So there's the rich solar batteries. There's a shunt, there's a fuse, there's a disconnect. The batteries have been holding, holding charge good, charging good, no problems at all with the rich solar batteries. Completely satisfied with those. So here's the front side of the DC disconnect. One point of disconnect for the entire system. So if something goes wrong, come here and hit the switch. All the 12 volt from the batteries out is dead. So this is our point of disconnect for anything 12 volt in the RV. Kills everything 12 volt. So for servicing, you know, if I'm not the one servicing, um, you know, just a standard disconnect, you know, 350 amp disconnect from Blue Sea. Uh, you know, standard protocol, have one point of disconnect. So that's how I put this in. So like I said, if anybody besides me works on it, they can hit this switch and everything 12 volt is dead. And then the converter right here, uh, reuse the factory converter uh, to charge the batteries. I add an additional uh, exterior receptacle so I can charge with a smaller power source like a power box, solar generator, things like that if I don't want to bring out a bigger generator to use the built-in charger in the Ames inverter. So reutilize that, which is nice to have another option. So this is where the, this is one of the bunks right here. So I'm gonna pull the, uh, pull the covers off of this and we'll look at all the wiring, things like that. So there is the Ames 3000 watt, 120 volt, um, pure sign, low frequency inverter. That has been an absolute beast. Um, no problems with it so far. I've got the remote for it. We'll go over that in just a minute. Or you can control it right here, whichever way you want to do it. It's got adjustable settings for the batteries, adjustable uh, amperage rate for the charge. So I've tested it with a Honda generator up to 100 amps. No problems with that. Uh, but I used use the factory TT30R right there to charge. So I can plug into the shore, which is shore power right here, which I'm not using shore power, I'm using a generator or power from the main power system to test the charging on this inverter. So no problems with it. Uh, you know, good solid inverter right here. And here's the bus bars right here mounted in this section where all the uh, DC stuff comes together. And I added a big four, four alt ground, all the, all the main power cabling's four, four alt. So tied in all the factory DC stuff, reconfigured everything because the factory wiring was an absolute nightmare in the system, just a junk pile of mess, loose connections, bad connections, just thrown together. So I went through and the whole uh, whole RV from, from tongue to bumper, all the way through and went over a bunch of the factory wiring, found all kinds of poor connections, loose connections, things like that. So I spent the majority of my time working on this project, fixing the factory installed wire versus the new wire that I was putting in. So I got the little uh, the inverter stacked up off the off the floor with the spacer, concrete board, let more airflow go through it. Uh, just 
just a solid performer. I mean, that is a solid performer. Then I got the Midnight Solar uh, breakers right here for the PV and for the charge controller. So, you know, good breakers, not had any problems with that, knock on wood. So uh, there's an overview of that. So here's the Outback FM80, Flex Max 80 charge controller, 80 amps, uh, worth of capacity in this beast right here. So you can see I've got 800 watts of aim panels up on the roof that came with the kit. And you can see we're not making a lot of power. So let me cut in and show you why. So I got the up here on the roof now. I'm going to show you the rooftop view of the panels. So I've got one, two, three series, one, two, three series, and then one, two, three up front series. They're all series, one, two, three, and then parallel together. This is the factory panel. Remember, I started to use eight of the Ames uh, panels. Well, the factory panel was the same specs, so I could tie it into these. So that helped out because I broke it up in twos, broke it up in fours, tried different ways, and then the configuration guy now, three, three, and three does a lot better. Um, you know, collecting what marginal sun I do have. So I got a lot of shading going on uh, this midday and I've got a big, big, huge white pine that's shading me out right now. And then of course the panels are flat and then the sun angle is low. So we're not making killer power right now. But in the summer when the sun's direct, directly overhead moving this way, cause we're, this is facing uh, east to west. So it's gonna scream in the summer. The sun's gonna hit it all day long. Just right now the forest is shading me out a little bit causing trouble, which I knew that. Uh, going into this so as you can see with the with the shading and the trees things like that flat panels winter sun You know, it's not making killer power right now, but in the summertime, it's gonna rip It's been keeping up with the load, you know running the heater doing some charge the power boxes from this system um, I've been robbing the system down, you know Here and there during a rain rainy day or whatever I've been taking power from this system the batteries in this system and dumping them into the main house system so I don't have to run the gasoline generator. So, you know, this is acting like a big portable power station right now, if you will. But yeah, no, no complaints out of this. Good controller. I mean, just, just a nice, a nice unit. And one more little quick thing about this Flex Max controller. This will make power. You know, it may not be but 10 or 15 watts, but this will make power in a lower light condition I've ever seen any charge controller before. Absolutely. I want to reiterate how much I love this charge controller. It can be after sunset and this thing just still, it pulls power. Just, it's great how the algorithm works in it and the software, the hardware. My other controllers, they'll, they'll shut down an hour before the sun's behind the mountains. Well, this one, the sun goes behind the mountain and it's still getting power. So I'm just amazed at how efficient this is and what it can pull out of those panels on the roof. So, I mean, this this is my new favorite charge controller. So I'm gonna put the biggest load on this inverter that I've put on it so far. I've just been charging power boxes and things. So got the oscilloscope hooked up right here, going into the circuit that the microwave is on. I'm gonna run the microwave. So we're gonna see what it's made of. So the oscilloscope set up, got the shunt right here. We're still charging a little bit from the PV. So I'm gonna turn the inverter on through the remote panel. So there we go, zero load right now, 122 volts. So it's a thousand watt microwave. And there is the, see if you can see that tag right there, power consumption, 1.35 kilowatts on the microwave for reference. So I'm gonna put a minute and a half on it and let's see what she's made of. Pretty, pretty significant load having a microwave running. So what do we got here? We have 46% of its load on a 3000 watt inverter. So what are we pulling out of it? 1.2 kilowatts, so 96 amps. And got a little bit coming in from the, you know, from the PV, so 1.2 kilowatts. And let's see what the wave looks like. Not too awful bad, not too awful bad at all. So she handles that load, no problem at all. Only, you know, half loaded, a little bit less than half loaded, so. You know, that's good that it'll handle that. So if it can run that darn microwave right there, you should have no problem with this AC unit because I've got a soft start on this and everything, and this doesn't pull but a little over a 1,000 watts when it's running. So the microwave is, you know, pulling a little bit more than the AC is going to pull. So, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Let's look at the oscilloscope again. Yeah, not too bad at all. So I want to talk about 
well, I mean, it's not a really a drawback, but one thing I'm doing, uh, since I've got the lithium batteries in here, they've got low temp protection, the rich solar batteries do, but I don't like my batteries getting cold. So I've been running the heat uh, on this RV. Now I've got all the plumbing winterized, so I can't run the uh, water pump, things like that, which I wasn't planning on, you know, having this awesome system. I want to take just a minute again and thank my friends and partners over at Shop Solar. So please be sure to visit their website at www.shopsolarkits.com. And also don't forget, use my coupon code, Mr. Off Grid. Save yourself 5% site-wide at Shop Solar. So please use that coupon. That's for you, the viewer. I'm not signed up for the affiliate program or nothing off that. That's just for you. That gives you some savings to get the solar equipment you need or components, get you motivated and get started in your own solar build. So I'd already winterized before, you know, Shop Solar, you know, partnered up with me on this build right here. So I've been running the heat, so I wouldn't have had to winterize. So I've, I've used some propane. I'm using a 20 pound tank. Uh, it takes about a month to use a 20 pound tank. So I'm keeping it around 54, 55 degrees in here. So I've been burning some propane to keep the batteries happier, which they, you know, they would, uh, the low temp cutoff would save them, but I don't like charging them when they're really cold and the capacity is lower when they're really cold. So I try to keep them moderated temperature. So the heat comes on at night. You know, we've had some nine, 10 degree nights, things like that. The batteries, uh, the RV has stayed, you know, 50 some odd degrees, no problem with that. So I have a, you know, a small expense with the heat. The next one, I'll have to winterize the uh, plumbing. So I can't show you the DC pump and everything running the spigots things like that, just got basic DC loads, lights, and things like that. I want to run, you know, as weather warms up, we'll have more PV input. Uh, we'll be able, we'll have load for the air conditioning, so we can do a full load on this air conditioner. And with a soft start on that air conditioner, a Honda 2000 uh, generator will start this 13.5 kBTU rooftop. So it'll start on the little Honda generator. I have no doubts that the Ames inverter We'll just yank that compressor right over, no problems on that air conditioner. So, you know, just a great, a great system and uh, no drawbacks besides I'm just keeping it warm and that's of my own choice. It's not required with the low temp cutoff on the batteries. I've got this whole build documented. So I'm gonna be bringing you more videos on this build when the weather warms up and, uh, you know, I'll go over more stuff. You just let me know in the comments what you wanna see, what parts of it, because I've got plenty, plenty of documentation on this whole build. Uh, so watch for more videos on this. They're going to be coming out. I just want to give you an update and let you know that the system is performing well and, uh, you know, lots of videos coming on this. So appreciate y'all watching, uh, my channel. Thanks for watching off Mountain homestead. Hope I earned a like from me. If you don't mind, please hit that like button questions, stuff you want to see on this build. Uh, if you're building your own RV system, just let me know in the comments. I'll try to help you out or cater the video releases to what you want to see. And if you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate the description. And again, special thanks to Shop Solar. And hop on there and use my coupon code. Save yourself a little coin. Get started on your own solar build. Y'all have a nice day.